got yourself stuck. I love these clouds. It's low profile. That's your sea plow. All right, guys, we're building a new plow truck today. And the first stop to building a new plow truck is putting a plow on. Toppers plus in Mankato. Hey, Sam. Matt, yeah. how you doing, bud? Good. How you doing? Good. Good, Good to finally meet you. Uh, We've been just, talking forever. Just the owner of Toppers. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. So can we go take a look at our plow? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go check it out. Right. Yeah, because you guys so well. build everything right in Mankato, right? Right. Yep. Yeah, now, how long have you guys been around? Oh, 51 years. 51 years. We started with tractor cabs, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been, I've ran a Heinecker plow for about 12 to 15 years. So where is she at? Can we go this way? Follow you. All right. Hi, Katie. Is it Katie? Kayla. Kayla. Nice to meet you, Kayla. Shiny. Look at that. Has anything changed with the Heinecker uh, V plows? Uh, so, yeah, some of them, you know, detortion trip. So if you hit something. Compression used to be springs right here. Now there's springs yeah, down here. So the idea behind the torsion trip is you're gonna take out that trip edge versus pushing in the frame of your truck. So it's not gonna damage your truck itself if you were to take out, say, a curb or something like that at speed and destroy your entire truck. It's just gonna damage that trip edge, okay. which is easily replaced. You guys also have the stops, the wing stops in, yep. and the which you never had, had before. These, uh, turnbuckles here, that just adds address, uh, address, you know, some more strength as well. So one of the things that hasn't changed on the Heineckers is the connection system. So that looks well, like we that's... a quick hitch one and a quick hitch two, depending on what type of truck you're putting it on. Okay. The quick hitch one are meant for the lighter duty trucks and then the quick hitch two are for the heavier duty. What is, what trucks. do you, so what do you consider light and like heavy? A, you know, like a half ton truck or something like that. Okay. Or like a Jeep or a Ranger or whatever. Okay. And then when you get up to the three quarter ton, then you're going to go into the quick hitch two. Okay. So this is a quick hitch two, I'm going to guess? Yes. Got it. So what's the first step in the process? On the hoist so we can get it up in the air. It's easier to work on. Um, after that it's getting your mount and stuff that's going to go into it, which we already got. Okay. Out. There's not a ton to Hineker mounts for it, at least not for this truck. Is your actual push bar forks, the frame mount, and then the push bar support. Okay. So, yeah. Ryan, can you tell me what that is one more time? Uh, it is. So we're talking about these. It's a catch foot or a stop. It's for stopping you from rolling over the top of cars. If you were to get into a rear end collision, we have to take them off for the plow install because your plow push bar will actually replace them. Uh-huh. So that's, that's it. That, that's that a ever, pretty cool feature I never knew was on these things. Yep, most people don't see it. You never think about it. Um, if plow ever comes off, they have to go back on. Legally? I believe legally. Okay. Most people don't because no one checks, but. Right, right, right. We always give give them back to the owner of the vehicle, so. When did they start uh, putting those on, do you know? About the same time they started caring about rear bumpers. Okay. I'm not exactly sure the date. I know it's been a while. Well, if it's a 
same amount for 2013-2018. It must be 2013. I think those were about 2,000, honestly. Are they? All right, so Ryan, you've installed these things on diesels. Now this is a yep. gasser. What's the main difference guys should be aware of? Uh, main difference is right up under here. Yeah. I can give you a little better light. Right up in here, normally there's gonna be an intercooler on the inside. Uh, you actually have to take that down and stand it off. It's kind of difficult to get in and between uh, because that mount can't go anywhere but on the frame and that intercooler is mounted right to the frame. Uh, so then you mount the front then you put the mount on then you got to reinstall the intercooler on a diesel and you can't take the diesel intercooler all the way off because otherwise you're going to be leaking fluids and all kinds of other stuff so you actually have to work kind of around it okay to get it off i see the whole bumper moving ryan are you taking the bumper off um not fully what has to come off is this little side plate here has to come off so the mount can actually go up It'll reuse this previous mounting bolt. Okay. Uh, in it. I believe it does on this one anyway. But yeah, the bumper actually comes loose because you're basically putting that mount and the supports on things that would normally be attached to the bumper. Okay. So always something to watch. Don't pull all your bolts unless you're sure things aren't going to fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's over your head, right? Yeah, you're going to have a bad day. All right, so this is one of the pieces that actually has to come off and one of the things that gets missed a lot on these mounts. So if you look up on this side, this bracket normally sits up here. You actually have to take it off initially to get this support mount up. And then you have to put two washers up on top to space this out so it's actually correct again. Okay. And this will actually go back in place over it, hold everything in and maintain stability. Okay. But a lot of people don't think about it or think, hey, I can just take that off. It's not necessary. So that bracket there. Okay, I'm going to look on the other side because you still have that one in place. Yep, that one's still in place on the other side. There it is. That's the bracket he's talking about that gets missed. That is one of the brackets holding your bumper to the truck. Oh, so. Kind of important. Yeah. You, so this is the mounting bracket for the plow, right? Correct. Okay. That's yeah. the one that the forks will actually sit on. You can look on it. Sorry about that. Um, that's where your forks will actually sit on. It's where the majority of the stability for it comes from. Um, it's what's actually connecting it to your frame and giving you a solid leverage source. Where would they go, Ryan? So what they'll do you is you'll pop off. these two screws out and you'll place them with the slightly longer ones and it'll actually go underneath here and connect onto that push bar. Oh, so then it's it's like uh, sticking a, a rear support so when the guys hit the push pile, it's just connecting into the frame more. Yep. All right, so Ryan's putting the new brackets on. And make sure I don't smash myself in the face when this drops. All right. The one I've used to set these okay. supports in roughly because they get washers behind them. Um, that was all, that was what I needed. I just needed to see you grab some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got Mark. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. Mark's been with Heineker for how long? 45 years. Now you're using hydraulic up and down, but you don't have hydraulic down pressure. Correct. We have competitors that use down pressure. Typically their designs have been, the reason they went to that is because they were designing some lighter weight plows for some lighter weight vehicles. There's a limit to how much down pressure you can put on anyway. Typically those systems are limited to about 200 pounds. Right. Because what you're doing is taking the weight off of your front tires and affecting your steering and braking then. And by the way, you know you guys have the best controller on the market. I agree and we get excellent reviews on that controller. It's the simplicity, 
oh, intuitiveness. It made it reversible, so if, if somebody wants to go this way instead of that way, to I go mean, like if down, they're yeah. left-handed or yeah, some, yeah. I mean, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> okay, so we've got one side cut out. Yep. So we did cut the valance. Or yep. The valance okay. guard, whatever. Yep. Okay. Whatever they want to call it, because um, obviously, otherwise, this can't go up, and there's nowhere for your fork to come through and hook onto the cups. We actually use just a small air saw. Actually, take a measurement of where the fork plate is sitting at. So, actually, that is right, right about where it needs to be. We're simulating ground here, because uh, that way you can actually push, push into the forks when you have it on the ground. As long as you set it right initially. How is the Heineker to install compared to? other plows because you install a lot of other plows yep. what's the comparison like um hinnaker normally is the easiest one to actually install for the mounts um just because there's almost never any drilling anything 2000 or newer you're using existing bolt holes you're using frame mounts that go around or something like that versus trying to drill through the hardened frame of a steel body uh something if you're trying to do it at home out of your garage you're not going to have a fun time doing we have a hard time doing it with air tools in a full shop so okay. so we've got the grill off why did we pull the grill off right um you have to pull the grill off a to get out the headlights on any modern truck for the headlight adapters so that they'll transfer to the plow um in addition it's also to run down as nicely as possible your actual control wires for both the power to the plow as well as the controller signals to the plow. Uh, we're, what we're doing is we're punching through the firewall to run the actual control harness through so you can activate your controller everything else like that. Um, can you point at it one more time? Yep it is right here. Got it. So like I said not all of them are this easy this one is nice that I can actually get at it. On this one, yeah, because not all of them fit in exactly nice. But then that is started through there, and that'll kind of give me my guide for how much actual wire I have. This is your original fuse. I've got it into, I think it's the cigarette port. Um, and then this is going to be the fuse that's actually used for the plow controller. It's really important that you don't put in too big of a plow fuse, because otherwise you can melt your battery terminals or burn up wires they're set as a 10 amp fuse for safety reasons that that way it'll pop that fuse before it does any damage to your actual truck we always set them on something that's not important like your cigarette lighter or your radio or something not detrimental to the truck functioning so that way if you do hit a snowbank too hard pop it or something goes wrong you're not stuck with an when you say truck. we you say you toppers guys plus. at toppers plus yes us here at toppers plus we tap into since this is running directly to the battery we've got our relay fuse there so there's a little dent. so now what is this fuse control that fuse is the fuse for the relays so oh, okay, if that okay. one goes out your plow won't run um the other one goes out your plow controller won't run so this one goes this one off. is for the relays it controls all the relay power but what was the other one if the uh, the other one is that one I showed you earlier that is for your uh, plow controller plow controller got yep. it okay good to know that's actually really good to know because guys have problems they should probably look right here right there first. or right here oh, it depends so on what what's thoughts. what it's doing so what are we doing right now we're ready to put the yeah, grill back, back on and Plow. What would be going on if, for you to check this fuse? No power to the plow, no lights. No, no power, yep. If there's no power into the lights. No. That's, 
That's why we call him Technical Tim. I just ate lunch, man. <laughs> We do recommend disconnecting your controller when it's not in use, so that way it's not getting bashed around, bumped around. They're not cheap controllers. And then either in your glove box or in your house, somewhere where it's not gonna get kicked around, messed up, anything like that. So what he's doing right now is he's getting the jack adjusted to the right height of the truck. These two have never been married together yet, so it's just a blind guess. When, but once it's hooked up to the truck, then the right height is set. So when you go to disconnect your jack, when you set your jack down, your jack will be at the right height. It's this first initial one that can give you the problem. For so that one, it's just making sure the tab is through uh, and just pushing in. It's a zero force insertion tab, so should not take much effort. I already dielectric this end. What is that connection now? This is actually your power and ground to your motor. You used to see a lot of people and they'd have a plate that where was, their plug I've was actually in. I never understood that. It I would it say breaks. that would rip so yep. fast. I see, the it first time I see bends a lot that, of pins and stuff like that. That's right, why we don't like, recommend doing don't it. Don't ever do that on my truck. We, we don't recommend doing that. All right, then I wasn't wrong. No, you were you were correct. Yeah, that's not a great idea because in this case the wire will flex and that mating pins won't. It's like the Batmobile of snowplow trucks. Before we do an adjustment, we always make sure everything actually works. Because it wouldn't really do you much good if it doesn't. Also, you're then getting fluid into the ram. So this is what we're looking at guys. Just so you guys know, we need the center point to touch at the same time as the end side. And so that's what we're gonna walk through right now is the adjustment procedure. So Ryan, what are you doing? You're loosening uh, up the, the center ram, right? Uh, pushing in the center ram, just so we can do a fluid check quick. Oh, uh, good. You always wanna check this back all the way, push this ram all the way down. Make sure it's in float or you're gonna be standing here looking dumb because it won't go down. <laughs> dumb, dumb-er in my case. And now the fluid that goes in here is the uh, uh, the cold cold weather hydraulic fluid, right? Correct. Okay. That we use the blue fluid, it's rated to negative 50, I believe. But in a pinch, you can still use ATF. You can, but we'd recommend flushing it afterwards. Really? Yep, just because you don't want those fluids to mix. Um, really? It's gonna change your difference or your rating as well as it's going to, the fluids aren't gonna mix correctly. So you're gonna have one that's gonna get really dirty really fast because it's gonna sit at the bottom or the top. Uh, and the other one is going to then be the opposite. So they don't necessarily mix together right. Not always, but it's also, also a lot harder to tell when your fluid is actually dirty. Um, that's a knowledge bomb. I had no clue. If I'm understanding this right, you're loosening these up so that this whole center mass column can and then shift a little let, bit. Shift it to the ground. Yep. And then you're gonna tighten out those. Then you're gonna tighten these back up because this is what we'll keeps actually everything use centered. These to adjust it. So this is actually what's gonna change the angle. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay. The other ones are what keep it healthy. Do you have to readjust it as your blade wears down at all? You could if you really wanted to. Normally, it won't matter that much because as you put the vehicle into float, it should, in theory, push down as it goes and your blade will wear evenly. Yeah. So. All right, so we've got. Good catch. Bro. Yeah, I'm used to this. <laughs> right, thanks, Ryan. And you guys, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for subscribing. Tell your friends. I appreciate that so much. And as always, you guys, God bless. Go get them. We will see you on the next one. Make sure you guys stick around because we're going to be moving some massive piles of snow with this bad boy right here. Well, that's all we've got for you on this one. Let me know what you think of the, the build video today. We still got more to do to this truck. 
This is just the beginning. I don't know if Tim know, knew that or not, but. <laughs> we got more to do. Okay. So when you got it, let's say you're in full scoop yeah. mode, then you want to open one side up, you just push to the side. So that opens it up that way, opens it up that way, goes back to V. Now if you want to straighten it out, I, I just put this controller in my hand, so. Like is, right now? I just picked it up, this is the first time, but. And then once you once you straighten it out, it, it just goes as one solid unit, it's like a straight. I'm telling you, it's the best controller ever made. Not joking. Come on, hit it like you mean it. You guys wonder what we're up against? That's ice. But that is ice that's got to be at least that thick. You can actually see a stick froze down in there. That's ice. I can barely run. Wait, watch this. need a yank a little pull you just need a little pull rescued by a stranger okay, that's all right. I got my daughter in the truck too oh okay we'll get her done fast yeah it's just right here man I'm stuck right there I think we need a little beefier tires on this truck Here, you got a little one in there. Yeah, cool. Oh man, thanks for coming oh, and no, saving them. No worries. Appreciate I it. I see the tires spinning. I didn't uh, figure I'd come over and check and see if you guys needed some help. I'm Stan. Stan, I'm Mick. Nice to meet you. Nice Mick. to meet you. Yeah, I'm Tim. Tim, nice to meet you. A little push to pull back. Here. I'll put it in reverse and then just, yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay, yeah, sounds good. He's not moving yet. There you go. We're good, Mick. I think we got it. Let me unchain you. Alright guys, well I think that's our video for today. We used it, abused it, tested it out. You guys tell me what you think of the video in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, God bless. Go get them you guys. And we will see you on the next one. We just got to get the rest of the way out now. See you next time you guys. Alright,